Hello everyone, Happy New Year. I'm Andrea Self. Welcome to the annual Golden Triangle UNCF Banquet. I am so honored to be serving as your MC for this very special and very important event. And my thanks to the committee for inviting me to take part in it tonight. Well, like many things in our world right now, we will be doing this very different in a virtual environment. But the mission of this very meaningful event is still the same. We want to raise money and awareness for the United Negro College Fund. I am a proud graduate of a UNCF school myself, Stillman College in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Well, there are also two UNCF schools in the state of Mississippi, Russ College in Holly Springs and Tougaloo College in Jackson. So your contributions throughout this event will help to ensure that these institutions continue to survive and thrive so that they can help young people in a loving and nurturing, nurturing environment provided by UNCF schools. Now, throughout the course of this program, you're going to hear from supporters of UNCF. You're gonna hear from churches, from businesses. You're going to hear from Greek organizations, civic organizations, all telling you why they donate and of course, encouraging you to donate to the UNCF. Now, throughout the program, you're also going to see the handle for a cash app as a way for you to send your donations electronically. We will also be providing you with an address on your screen so that you can send your donations by check if you prefer to do it that way. Also, you're going to be treated to some wonderful entertainment throughout the course of this program, including from the renowned Russ College Choir. So I can't wait to hear from those very talented young people. We're going to begin though with a meditation from Reverend Dwight Prowl of St. James United Methodist Church in Columbus. After that, Tabita Hughes, who is the chairperson of this committee, will come with our occasion. And then after that, we will be graced by Mrs. Dorothy McClung Lewis with a selection. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for all of your blessings for the institutions served by the Negro College Fund, for the individuals, companies, and organizations that support the Negro College Fund. We ask your continuous blessings on these institutions, staff, students who are served by the Negro College Fund. We ask that you continue to bless those who share with their resources with the Negro College Fund, that it may continue to provide education to students who are involved in the Negro College Fund. Amen. I am Tabita Hughes, a 1972 graduate of Russ College and chairperson of the Golden Triangle United Negro College Fund Committee. The goal of this event is to make it possible for many young minds to have the financial means to complete the higher educational process at United Negro Colleges and or universities. The cost of education has and is constantly increasing. It seems as if the quote, it takes a village to raise a child needs to be paraphrased to, it takes many people given abundantly to send a child to college. Will you please be a part of the United Negro College Fund Village by making a donation? The purpose for this occasion is simple. Too much that is given, much is required. At some point, we all are called to make a way for someone else. Some people are track makers, some are bridge builders, and some follow the tracks and cross the bridges that others have built. But each one of us is called by God to make a way or lay a track or build a bridge for the next generation. It has been said that nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. God has commissioned us to empower the future generation. Are we on our job? It costs money to learn and to bring learners, teachers, and administrators together. This occasion is a campaign to encourage everyone to donate to the United Negro College Fund. 
Your donations will provide financial opportunities for students at UNCF colleges and universities. Please give and give again to this higher educational investment. You will get your financial investments returned to you in so many ways and faster than you might realize. We stand up on the shoulders right now of those who have made tracks and built educational bridges for us to cross. Russ College motto is, by their fruits, ye shall know them. By giving, you are planting educational fruit trees for the next generation. Many of us, including myself, have reaped the educational fruits from the harvest that the generations before us planted. Help us continue to make the Golden Triangle United Negro College Fund a success by donating toward education. It is a wonderful investment. It is a wonderful investment. My name is Johnny Johnson. I'm a product of a black institution, which is now closed. And I give to UNCF because I feel like it's our duty to not ever allow another black institution to close. And with your help, I encourage you to also give to UNCF because a mind is a terrible thing to waste. And we're talking about our future, our future. Our young folks who are trying to go to college now are struggling. And they need yours, mine, and everyone help. So I encourage you today, if you can, please give to UNCF and Russ College. Thank you.
thanks to all of the churches who have donated to UNCF. Now, if your church has not donated, you still have a chance to do that. You're going to see on your screen the handle for a cash app. This is a way for you to send your donations. And remember, no donations too big or small uh, for the United Negro College Fund. So you can send it electronically through cash app, but we also have a way for you to send in your checks by mail. You're going to see a mailing address there on your screen so you can send your donations to uh, UNCF that way. Remember, every single dollar that you are sending will help Russ College and Tougaloo College here in Mississippi continue to nurture young minds. Now, people throughout the community want you to know why they give to UNCF. We're gonna hear from Dr. Tiffany Hughes Brandon, Ms. Cheryl Turner, the past Southern Regional Director of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated and Stephen Johnson. Then there will be a special message from the Golden Triangle Steering Committee. Hello everyone. I am Dr. Tiffany Hughes Brandon, and I'd like to talk to you today about the invaluable experience of the United Negro College Fund. So I first like to tell you that my mother, she graduated from Russ College, which is funded by the UNCF. And she's also the chairperson of the Golden Triangle chapter of UNCF. Uh, she has a master's degree. She's, she's been in a valued educator for 40 plus years. So I just wanted to give you a little background of not only can you attend these schools, but you can also prosper and do well in your prospective fields. Also, my father, he's an alumni of Mississippi Valley State University, which I also attended as well. And he has been a self-employed um, businessman for 40 plus years. My uncle and aunts, they attended Jackson State University, Alcorn State University, and my wife also attended Mississippi Valley State and graduated from Clark Atlanta University, which is funded by the UNCF as well. And she's a licensed professional counselor uh, with the state of Georgia. So these schools uh, give you a vast experience of love, support, um, acceptance, and we just would love for you to donate if you can. Hello, I'm Cheryl Turner. I was born in Jackson, Mississippi, approximately five miles from Jackson State University and Tougaloo College, both historically Black institutions. Historically Black colleges were born out of necessity. After the Civil War, the systemic and strategic exclusion of Black folk from gaining an education spurred the founding of many institutions. Three, prior to the war, with the help of missionaries, that necessity to provide a stimulus for education is no less warranted today. Thankfully, the United Negro College Fund and the Golden Triangle Chapter have met this need for well over five decades, awarding scholarships, advocating for minority education, and financially supporting 37 historically Black colleges and universities. That is why we want you to join in our continued fight to provide a quality education for every student desiring it. Remember, we can't simply believe in equality in education. We have to create it. Please give. Greetings, I am Stephen Johnson, a proud graduate of Tougaloo College, representing the prestigious, ostentatious, and remarkable class of 1999. It is indeed an honor and a privilege to represent my great institution on behalf of the United Negro College Fund. It is because of this great organization that scholars like myself and others have had the blessed opportunity to attend an HBCU and other institutions around this great country to matriculate, to grow, and become a dutiful citizen in this great country and abroad. I am indeed blessed to have walked the highly admired campus of Tougaloo College, home of the Eagle Queen. And given the fire blazing learning experiences that shaped my humble beginnings as an educator, classroom teacher, a musician, 
a choral student, and to this very day, an elementary school principal. Thank you, UNCF, for this opportunity. Thank you to the Golden Triangle Committee for creating this space and platform to pay tribute to such a worthy cause. Thank you, Tougaloo College, where the mother eagle routes thine eaglets to the breezes, where they enjoy the test. I am indeed blessed and I count it an honor to lift my voice in total praise. Thank you and may God bless each of you. UNCF means a lot to me. All the things that I've accomplished in life, I think back of what was going on at that time, and I'm very grateful. Think in terms of UNCF schools and what they could mean to each of you. This is why I contribute to the Golden Triangle United Negro College Fund. All right, thanks for all those wonderful messages. Now, who better than those who are on campus to tell us how important your donations are? Here with a special message and an appeal, the president of Russ College, Dr. Ivy R. Taylor, and a student. After their message, we'll have a selection from the renowned Russ College Choir. Good evening, my name is Eric Johnson. I am currently a senior mass communication major at Russ College and I serve as the SGA president. And I want to say greetings to the Golden Triangle area. I am a product of this area, born in Columbus, Mississippi. I have participated in the Pre-Alumni Council and I serve on the national board as the Pre-Alumni Editor of the Torch. Because of UNCF, I have been able to attain a free education through the UNCF Coke Scholarship Program, the Walt Disney Program, and also get an opportunity to attend Columbia University with a full ride because of the UNCF nomination process for the HBC fellowship through the institution. And just a few things to say that I thank you guys for this opportunity. And because of your donations, that students like me are able to do this. Your donation to UNCF can continue to support first generation college students like me to not only attend college, but graduate school also. Future generations of students are depending on you for what you do. So please continue to support UNCF because you are making a true difference in someone's education. Thank you. Hello, my name is Imani Lewis and I'm a junior social work major from Chicago, Illinois. I am a very active member of the Russ College student body and I also serve as UNCL's student ambassador. Due to the 2020 pandemic, several of my plans and conversations to assist students to apply for scholarships has been done in a virtual format. UNCF has been a lifeline for countless of students over the years as it relates to access to scholarship monies to assist in attending college and in some instances graduating from college. I myself am a recipient of multiple scholarships. Without these scholarship funds, I would not be able to continue my studies at my beloved Russ College. I ask of you, no, I beg of you, please continue to support UNCF and students just like me. You have an opportunity tonight to make a big impact in young people's lives. The information is provided on the screen. Remember, a mind is a terrible thing to waste and a wonderful thing to invest in. Thank you. Hello, alumni and friends of Russ College and the United Negro College Fund. You just heard from two of our current students, Eric Johnson, SGA president, and Imani Lewis, Russ College, UNCF ambassador. I'm Ivy Taylor. On behalf of the trustees, faculty, staff, and students at Russ College, 
Greetings from the Citadel on the Hill. I have the distinct pleasure of serving as the 12th president of Russ College. Allow me to extend a special thanks to the Golden Triangle United Negro College Fund Committee. We sincerely appreciate everything that you do for our beloved Russ College and for the United Negro College Fund. We know that this year, as a result of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, many of our events and celebrations are not able to continue in the same fashion, but I'm so appreciative of your efforts to continue our legacy and the traditions of Russ College. With that in mind, I'd like to express my appreciation to the committee for your continued fundraising efforts to support both Russ College and the UNCF sustained largely by the help of alumni and many friends our four-year liberal arts institution has triumphed over countless adversities to become a beacon of hope and positive transformation for more than 40,000 graduates we're eternally grateful for all you've been to us and we appeal to you to continue your investments at russ college your support and contributions are an indication of your interest and support of our efforts to continue providing a quality education for tomorrow's leaders. With your continued financial support, Russ College and the United Negro College Fund will continue to be in a strong position to provide quality academic and cultural experiences for students who seek a better future through higher education. I look forward to the time after the pandemic where I'm able to meet each of you in person and welcome you back to the campus of Russ College. But in the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy, and be blessed. Coming on, 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 coming on
students for that wonderful selection. Well, many, many organizations that are already doing great work in their communities are also donating to the United Negro College Fund. And there's still time for your Greek organization or your civic organization to give. Again, there's the Cash App, it's on your screen. That's the handle you can use if you want to send your donations electronically. We also invite you to send your checks by mail. And there is the address there on your screen if you want to send your uh, donation in the form of a check. Please help these schools continue their mission of educating young minds. And now more individuals in the community share why they give. Plus, we are about to hear from the president of the National Alumni Council of UNCF, Mr. Anthony Brown. Let's take a listen. Greetings to the Golden Triangle UNCF Committee, the Russ College Bearcat family, and all other viewers and supporters. I'm Anthony Brown, and I proudly represent UNCF's mission as the president of the National Alumni Council for UNCF, and I bring you salutations of more than 450,000 alumni from across the country. It is a pleasure to be here with you today to join in your fundraising efforts for UNCF. Now listen, you all are doing an amazing job to advance the purpose of serving our future leaders, the community, and the nation. As you know, UNCF supports more than 60,000 students at over 1,100 college and universities across the country. And as we look forward into 2021, it is important to remember why we give back. Now, as we prepare for another moment to celebrate the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in a few days, I reflect on what he once said. He said, we are now faced with the fact that tomorrow is today and we are confronted with the fierce urgency of now. Day to day, we are forced to face challenges, challenges like a health crisis, economic difficulties, racial disparities, and the list goes on and on. But one thing for sure, our UNCF founders, Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune and Dr. Frederick D. Patterson knew was, it would require more than themselves to ensure more African Americans had access to higher education. Now, Dr. Bethune, my founder of Bethune-Cookman University, once said, the progress of the world will call for the best that all of us have to give. Well, today is that day, and we are in a position to hold the torch higher to light the way for a brighter future. Today is the day, Bethune envisioned, where we can join together and build history as we see fit for our students. Now, 
I won't hold you much longer. I believe that all HBC alumni can support all HBCUs and that we are stronger together when we are standing united. Now, you heard the challenge from Andrea Self to all organizations. So I need for you to take a moment, pull out your cell phone, and text to give, cash app, go to the website, make a donation, make it happen. Now, all the links are right here on the screen and in the chat. Now, I personally am calling out all members of the Divine Nine, especially my brothers of Alpha, Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, and join me in blessing in our future because a mind is a terrible thing to waste, but a wonderful thing to invest in. Thank you. I give for the future generation. Hi, my name is Bernice Jones. I'm a proud graduate of Russ College. This is why I invest in education. I donate because it's very important for me to give back to the United Negro College Fund. All right, we also want to send, extend a very special thank you to many individuals in communities in the Golden Triangle who have donated to the UNCF. You can too. So remember, you can send those donations through Cash App. The handle is there on your screen. Also the mailing address, if you'd like to send your money, uh, your donations through a check, there is the mailing address on your screen to do it that way. Now we will have entertainment from Mr. Jerry Brown, followed by more messages from Mr. Robert Jones. He is CEO. CEO of Aquaflow Incorporated and Mr. Jamari Edwards, CEO of J5. RMG Band from Columbus, Mississippi. We're so excited about this fundraiser. I'm here just to remind you to give big. It is so important that we support our HBCUs now like never before. So remember, give big. See you soon. <laughs> Need more love in the heart of the people. We need more love in the heart of the man. Need more love for one, one another. We need love, 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 love in the heart of the man.
watch him see us through. You know why I say that? My name is Robert Jones from New Jersey. I was born and raised in Columbus, Mississippi. I support the United Negro College Fund because it's an organization that helps our youth and it helps our community at the same time. Education is very powerful during this, this day and time. So support uh, the United Negro College Fund Whatever you have to give, it doesn't matter. Just give. Uh, if you look up uh, the name Frederick Patterson, 1944, he established this organization. So please donate. Thank you.
です。Hello, I'm Jabari Edward Sr., the founder and CEO of J5 Solutions. J5 Solutions is a holding company with the sole purpose of building black wealth and breaking the cycles of poverty. So therefore, I was honored when I was asked to do a video in showing my support for the United Negro College Fund. In 1944, the United Negro College Fund was founded by Marion Bethune and Frederick Patterson for the sole purpose of supporting the struggling HBCUs that were existing during that time. Today we have over 100 HBCUs and they need our support more than ever. But even more importantly than the institutions, our young kids need our support. These young kids are the best and the brightest that we have to offer. They are our future, they are our tomorrow, and they need us. The United Negro College Fund throughout the years has given over $100 million in scholarships and it has served as a pipeline in which we've been able to find our best and brightest talent in America. So on today, I'm asking you to join me and my family and all of those around me who are given to the United Negro College Fund because of its purpose, because of its mission, and because of the time in it today, we need the United Negro College Fund more than ever. So I'm asking you to join me in supporting the United Negro College Fund because the mind is truly a terrible thing to waste. God bless. Well, several businesses have also stepped up to give to the United Negro College Fund, and we thank all of you. If your business would like to make a donation, you can do that electronically, you can do it by mail. We have the information there on your screen. There's the Cash App handle. You can also mail your check to the mailing address that you see there on your screen. After a selection um, from the Russ College Choir coming up next, we're gonna hear from Mrs. Tracy Tate Bridges who will be introducing our keynote speaker. Someday I wish upon a star and 
Awesome performance by the world-renowned Rust College a cappella choir. As a former member of the choir, it sure brought back many fond and lasting memories. Good evening. My name is Tracy Tate Bridges, and it is my privilege to introduce our keynote speaker. Joining us this evening is Reverend Jarvis Williams. Reverend Williams is a native of Columbus, Mississippi. He is the former pastor of Tabernacle Baptist Church in Macon, Mississippi. Reverend Williams is a versatile speaker and presenter and has traveled the country engaging and inspiring congregations, civic groups, and nonprofit organizations alike. Presently, Reverend Williams is a doctoral candidate in public policy at Georgia State University in Atlanta, Georgia. Please. Join me in welcoming this year's keynote speaker, Reverend Jarvis Williams. Good evening. It is so wonderful to be able to join with such a wonderful organization for a cause that I believe is a noble cause, one that I think this generation must fight for and must struggle to pass opportunities on to the next generation. The United Negro College Fund reminds me of the song that our ancestors used to sing. And that was, they would say, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on freedom. It seems that they were convinced that intelligence, thinking, was a prerequisite for freedom. And here we are at a moment when it seems the nation struggles to think clearly, when it seems that we struggle to speak the truth, that the United Negro College Fund is still in the words of our ancestors, still trying to help young people wake up and help their minds stay on freedom. It is no surprise that uh, many of us are just overwhelmed by the events that we have seen on the news, the events that we read about in the paper and on social media outlets. After a tumultuous turn of events last year, it seems that Black Lives Matter became a driving moral claim that the nation believed was ready to be fundamentally embodied and practiced. And we demonstrated this type of commitment through marches and writings and songs and even voting. And now here we are, post election cycle. And on my birthday, while watching TV, thanking God for another opportunity to still be amongst my friends and loved ones, I see what happens at our nation's capital. And 
all I could think about is that if the nation is struggling to go forward, if we have possibly compromised our deepest values, what does that mean for black people? What does it mean for minorities? And it's interesting because throughout the course of the American narrative, variations of Black Lives Matter have emerged. You had Black Freedom Matters. During slavery, many were arguing that Black freedom mattered. Abolitionists, for example, pushing the argument that freedom matters. And not just anybody's freedom, but Black freedom matters. Post-Civil War, we struggled because we said Black education matters. We started trying to create schools to teach and to prepare young people coming out of slavery to, to contribute to the new world. Black labor mattered. We started trying to organize to reap the benefits of labor. Black religion matters. The terror of the KKK and other organizations knew that one of the central figures and institutions in black life was the black church. And so it's not an accident that black churches burned all over the country as blacks tried to pick up the pieces post slavery. We said black churches matter. We said that black soldiers matter. When they would come back from the war and we would find, find themselves struggling, mistreated, brutalized, even with the uniforms on, we said black soldiers matter. Charles Hamilton Houston came to the conclusion by watching and seeing soldiers mistreated that he wanted to study law so that he could defend the defenseless. Ida B. Wells helped us to see that all black bodies matter by pointing to how the eras of justice, the violence, the terror of lynchings continue to send messages down the spine of black America that black bodies swinging from trees didn't matter to the world. But she helped to push black bodies matter. In the civil rights era, we said civil rights matter. Black voting matters. And we started struggling to try to elect black officials post Civil Rights Voting Rights Act. And we have been seemingly struggling since that moment to elect black bodies and black minds and black talent, hoping to further push the needle that black lives matter. Well, we've been successful in some ways and we've struggled in other ways. And here we are now. We must face this particular challenge. We are engaged in what I want to frame as a great debate. The two positions that I wanna suggest that we must answer the question for. One, Will we conclude that black ma lives matter instrumentally? That is, will black lives only matter when we can convince others that they matter? Will black lives matter only when they behave a particular way? Will black lives matter only when they are educated at Ivy Leagues? Or will black lives matter only when they, their hair is permed in a way symbolic to white tolerance. Will black lives matter only when they have wealth or when they wear nice clothes? Or maybe black lives only matter if they confess Jesus as Lord. Maybe black lives only matter when they don't make mistakes. So that if we can point to 
the deficiency or the failure of our young people, then surely whatever life throws at them, whatever mistreatment they endure, surely they deserve it because they have made mistakes. Maybe we will say black lives matter only when black lives are educated, when they've been given opportunities to go to fancy schools and get degrees. And yet, the argument that black lives matter instrumentally, while for some it leads to a good life, it seems that it's useful to instrumentalize black lives when you have skills. But I want to suggest the great debate will be between if black lives matter instrumentally or will black lives matter fundamentally. And here I, I stand committed that black lives matter fundamentally, even when it makes us have to compromise the good life. When jobs no longer hire us because we refuse to participate in a system that delegitimizes our brothers and sisters who are less fortunate. Black lives matter fundamentally. Black lives matter whether or not we get the person elected we hope or not. Black lives matter whether or not there's a black face in a high place or not. Black lives matter whether or not they are Christian or not gay or straight, whether they're gender fluid, black lives matter, whether they go to church or not, whether their pants are sagging or not, whether they have tattoos or earrings or not, black lives matter. And the great debate will have to be that we have to create and commit ourselves to educating the emerging debaters. We need debaters to join in, to teach us, to teach the nation how to make black lives matter fundamentally. And so here we are. Here we are. We must indeed create and give voice to the next generation of great debaters. And I believe that the United Negro College Fund has always been on point because it has always been on the front lines of helping to create the generation's next great debaters. I'm reminded of the movie Great Debaters and Denzel Washington is preparing his young debaters, preparing them to address a world that he understood would they, they would have to debate for their freedom and for their liberties. And in a classic scene, he's preparing them to face the world like HBCUs, Tougaloo, Rust, like they can only do. And while he's preparing them, he hollers out, Who's the judge? The students scream back out to their great debater, their great teacher. And they say, the judge is God. Denzel, the teacher, hollers back to the students. And why is he God? The debaters, the youngsters, they respond because God decides who wins or who loses not my opponent. And then you hear Denzel, the teacher, ring back out. And who is your opponent? The students scream. They don't exist. Denzel, the teacher, why do they not exist? The students respond, because they are merely a dissenting voice. To the truth I speak. And then Denzel concludes, speak the truth. 
And it seems that the black intelligentsia, if black lives will matter fundamentally, black intelligence must thrive. And this is where you come in. Because we have an opportunity to give the space for young people to go to school to get their minds stayed on freedom. We have an opportunity to give to others maybe what we did not get ourselves. It costs money to go to school. It costs time and energy. Here I am. I have dedicated 20 years of my life to higher education. In school, teaching, struggling. The government has given loans. I've been fortunate. My family has blessed me. I've been fortunate. And yet it cost. It costs money. It costs friends and family because you have to keep your mind stayed on freedom. That doesn't mean that you have to go to school to get a degree or to get a fancy degree. Black intelligence means you learn how to navigate the world and you live in such a way that black lives matter fundamentally. Tougaloo and Russ College have created students and they have given evidence of how to teach and prepare the black intelligentsia that black lives matter fundamentally. It's amazing what can happen when the black intelligentsia puts its mind on freedom. And I must say that we need more black intelligentsia. We need more young people to go to school, to become doctors and lawyers and teachers, to become judges and politicians, to be preachers and teachers and nurses and engineers and electricians and mathematicians. We need black intelligence, because we need them to go into the world and practice their profession with the moral conviction that black lives matter fundamentally. So will you join with the cloud of witnesses who have oftentimes given the very, the very best they had to educate and to help young people put their minds on freedom. The United Negro College Fund is trying to do what I believe Black Lives Matter mattering fundamentally requires. That all children have an opportunity if given the inclination to be trained and cultivated, to be prepared to live well. It may not be the good life because if black lives matter fundamentally, it will cost. I'm not suggesting you do something that I myself and millions others, millions of others have not done. It costs but freedom cost. And if you think the price of education is too steep, maybe you say, I don't wanna to go to school, I don't want to spend money on books, I'd rather buy a house, I don't want to invest money in school, I'd rather buy clothes or cars, or I'd rather try to get out of debt, or I'd rather do these other things that are very noble. There's a story in biblical scripture I'll reference and then I'll bid you farewell of a man who sold all he had to go back and buy 
a little plot of land. Paraphrasing the narrative, but some might ask, why would you give up all that wealth for just a little plot? Well, the insight of the story is that there was something in that little plot. And the story suggests that there was treasure in that plot worth all his possessions. And I want to say to you, someone who has struggled and paid the price of family, friends, resources, opportunities, joy, in some cases, traveling, that there is something in education, a treasure. And once you find that treasure, it will be worth all you've sacrificed. So will you give to the United Negro College Fund and help us lift every voice until earth and heaven reign? And let's raise a generation and help them to keep their mind stayed on freedom. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Williams, for those inspiring words. As we move to the end of our program, the committee chairperson, Ms. Davina Hughes, wants to come back to give us some final remarks. Ms. Hughes? What a wonderful, powerful keynote speaker. Thank you, Reverend Jarvis William, for a powerful message. Under Seth, the awesome MC, thank you for navigating the program. We are very appreciative to the participants. All of you have made it possible for the Golden Triangle United Negro College Fund Committee to have the first virtual UNCF marathon. Special acknowledgments to all of the businesses, churches, organizations, and individuals who have made contributions to this event. Your donations are making higher education possible for many students. For those of you who still wish to give, it's not too late. For mine is a terrible thing to waste, but a wonderful thing to invest in. To everyone, Thank you for being a part of and viewing this program. The Golden Triangle United Negro College Fund Committee, thank you very much. Thank you all so much for joining us for this very special event in a really special environment. We're doing this all virtually. It took a lot of hard work and a lot of people to pull this off virtually. So thanks to all of those who worked so hard behind the scenes, the faces that you won't see in the names you may not necessarily ever know, but thank you all so much for that. Remember that all the money raised tonight will go to the United Negro College Fund to help schools to provide educational, exceptional educational opportunities for students. UNCF lists as its mission, and I got this from the website, and I want to read it to you. It says to build a robust and nationally recognized pipeline of underrepresented students who, because of UNCF support, become highly qualified college students. That is the important work of the United Negro College Fund. And as I mentioned to you at the beginning, I myself am a product of one of those great schools. So it is my great honor to help in this event tonight for the Golden Triangle Committee. Many thanks to all of you who've given this evening. And if you still want to give, I have to tell you one more time, there is a cash app for you to do that. And there's also a mailing address if you would like to send your donations that way. Thank all of you for tuning in. Have a good evening.